Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at DNA profiling. I'm going to walk you through how they create a DNA profile. And most importantly, I'm going to show you how to read one in an exam or a test and how to explain the reasons why you potentially chose the person or the victim um, or the parent from the choice, making sure that you get full marks every single time. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed because I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday for grade 8 to 12 life sciences. Also, if you are in matric and you're thinking about getting that distinction at the end of the year and you want a little bit of extra tuition from me, then maybe you should join my membership and you can find that on my homepage. You just simply click the join button and you select the option that you would like to have. So let's jump into this video. Now, the most important thing I want to stress here to you is the difference between DNA profiling and DNA fingerprinting. In the exam, and I'm talking about specifically the final exam, we are only ever going to refer to this process as DNA profiling. And basically, a DNA profile is looking at the entire uh, set of DNA that a person has, and we select out sections that are unique to you, and we want to determine whether the blood left at a crime scene is it yours, is it um, another suspect's. We want to use a DNA profile to determine the paternity of a child, so who is the father of that child. We can also use a DNA profiling to determine if you have a genetic disorder or if we need to identify the human remains that are left behind and we have a, a sample to compare it to. We can use DNA profiling to do that. Now, depending on the level that you are doing this particular topic on, some of these things you don't need to know as much detail, but I will say this. If you are studying the South African curriculum, you don't need to know a lot of detail about how we make the DNA profile. You need to know more about how we read it. However, I'm still going to give you a basic understanding of how we make a DNA profile because there are three important things that you need to know about it in your final exam. Now, it's at this point that if you are not very familiar with the structure of DNA and what makes up a piece of DNA, then I suggest you click the, click the video above now, which will take you back to an introduction to DNA so that you're more familiar with the terminology I'm about to use. So I have this picture in front of us here now, which is a piece of DNA. It's a molecule of DNA. And um, if you're familiar with the structure of DNA, you will know that right now we're looking at the sugar phosphate backbone over here. And then we've got these purple and these like turquoise um, sort of rungs or um, steps moving through it. And those are the bases. And ultimately, when we are creating a DNA profile, we are trying to find sections. So let's say from here to there, we are trying to find sections of DNA that are unique to you. And generally, the things that are unique to you are referred to as STRs, or short tandem repeats. And what they are is they are repeats of certain letters that are unique to you. Now, when I say repeating letters, I'm referring to the code that DNA is written in. So is it A, 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 A repeated? Or maybe it's C, A, C, A repeated. So those are short tandem repeats, and they need to be fairly short, so they're not like whole pieces of DNA, but those are actually the things that make you unique, and that's how we tell the difference between people, and we can identify criminals, or we can identify um, fathers and mothers. So now let's look into how do we actually make this DNA profile. Um, and I want to just remind you again, please do not call it a DNA fingerprint. You will not get the mark for this in the final paper. It is a DNA profile. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is the actual process. Now, you do need to know this name. It is gel electrophoresis. This is the process that we use in order to create the profile that we're going to look at. Now, this is where um, sometimes your teacher wants you to know a lot more detail than others. So I'm going to run through it. Um, and then I also want you to know that at the end of the year, you don't need to know this much detail. 
you do need to know the name of the process being electrophoresis. Um, but other than that, I'm going to highlight two other things you need to know, and that's really it. But let me just show you how we actually make it. So what we do, step one over here, is we take a blood sample. We extract DNA from your blood sample, specifically your white blood cells, because red blood cells don't have DNA in them. And then what we do is we cut into your DNA using a restriction enzyme. Now, that is the second thing that we need to know for our final exam. And that is the thing that cuts up your DNA into pieces. And what are we cutting those pieces into? We are looking for those STRs I mentioned earlier. We then take those DNA fragments, we put them into the electrophoresis machine, and it's got like a gel plate within it. And what we do is we run an electrical charge through it. And when we um, put that electrical charge through it, what happens is, if this is the plate, we put the DNA at the top over here in these little windows. And then depending on how big or small the piece of DNA is, if it's very big, it will remain quite high up on the plate. But if it's very small, it'll move lower down. And what you end up getting is what sort of looks like a barcode. And this barcode references this person's particular DNA. But now we need to be able to see this DNA, right? Because DNA is microscopic. So the next thing we do is we wash off the excess DNA and we use a radioactive probe, which basically means what we do is we make it visible by making these little bands actually glow. And that makes them more visible. Now that they are more visible, we go over to this point over here, step 10 and 11, where we can actually see these bands and they are visible. And someone will read those bands and be able to tell you whether or not this person is the criminal, are they the father, etc. Now, the third and final thing that I said we do need to know out of this process is what do we call these like stripy bits, right? So according to the guideline, we can call them a band or we can call them a marker. I prefer genetic marker because it is a little bit more accurate of what it is. But you can use either one of these words to describe um, the, let's say, the image that is produced. And you'll see I'm going to use those words now to describe how to read different DNA profiles. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we actually read a DNA profile. And there are two of the most common forms that we will see in exams and tests. And this is what I always tell my own matrix to do. And it always works out the best for them. And they always manage to figure out um, who potentially the father was or who the suspect is. So we're going to start off with uh, reading a DNA profile for a paternity test. And let's remember that paternity tests are testing for who is the father of the child because the mother has already been established. Now, what we need to do is get a ruler and a highlighter when we're in the exam or test, and you're going to cover up everybody's markers, right? with your ruler and you're going to slowly drag your ruler down and as you drag the ruler down the mark or the first mark that aligns with the child you need to see where that aligns with all the other parents so if I'm looking at this child and I'm going down the list this one over here is our first mark so we highlight that and we look across to both the mother and to the fathers and we highlight the fathers that also have those bands in place we do the next one and we see that aligns with the mother and we carry on going down and we get to this next bar of the child and it aligns with this mother here and then this dad. But not the uh, dad too because you see it's just slightly off. It's not perfectly in line. It's got to be perfectly in line and that's why our ruler is really helpful. We then highlight this next one and we've got this dad here and dad number three. The next one from the child is this one here and that one there and then last but not least this bottom line is in line with the mother and not dad one because they are not perfectly aligned now looking at the three profiles who is the father of the child well what we're looking for is the father with the most genetic markers in common which is going to be dad number three because he has three markers in common 
Now, this is the important bit. When we are in an exam or a test, often they'll ask you to identify the father and then give a reason why you selected that father. And this is what we're always going to provide when we are explaining your reason for parents. So when explaining, you need to state that 50% of those markers match the mother and 50% of the markers match the father. And when I talk about a marker, I mean those bands or those dark lines that we see there. And that's actually kind of how it makes sense and that that's how we make children right uh, children are 50 percent of their mom and 50 percent of their dad so um, if this child has six bands which uh, they do then three will come from mom and three will come from dad sometimes it's slightly uneven and you might get mom will have four and dad will have three but that dad is the only one with those three, then that's perfectly fine. Potentially that just is um, not an error, but maybe that is a band that wasn't passed on to this child or wasn't tested in that profile. But that's the reasoning you're always going to give in an exam. Now what we're going to do is look into crime scene investigations, and this time we are looking for a suspect. Perhaps there was some blood left at a crime scene, and now what we need to do is we need to establish, does that blood belong to the victim, or did somebody else leave it behind, and then we can identify that specific suspect. So you do exactly the same thing. Take your ruler, you're going to cover up all of the bars, and you're going to slowly drag it down, and you're always going to compare the crime scene bar to the individuals so we're going to go our way down and we're going to highlight all of the bars that match up with the crime scene and it's okay if you notice as i do the next one that there might be bars that they all share and that is going to happen because that is the nature of genetics we are all humans so there is definitely going to be um genetics that we all share so it's not uncommon to find that and we go down and we make sure that we highlight all the bars that are shared with the dna i think that's it right so now even though suspect one and suspect three do have some bars that are present on the crime scene dna we need to make sure that all of the genetic markers or all of the bars that we see at the crime scene dna must match all of the suspects and there is only one individual that has all of the bars present and that's going to be suspect two okay you'll see they're all there it's actually a mirror image exactly the same so what do we say in exams well when we are identifying a criminal you need to use the following explanation you need to say 100 percent of the markers match the dna sample and when saying that, we don't want to confuse it with the um, paternity test where we do 50-50. It must be 100%. Now, as always, I like to finish off my lessons with a terminology a recap. And you can use these words for flashcards, which makes studying so much easier. Speaking of flashcards, all of my flashcards are now available to purchase. There are over 500 flashcards available. You can get them on my website. There are on every single topic you need to know for life sciences for the final exam. They are complementary to the study guide. So if you have the study guide, it's perfect. And even if you don't have the study guide, the flashcards are going to make your life so much easier to study from. But getting into the recap, in the beginning of the video, we spoke about STRs, which are short tandem repeats. Those are the letters that are repeated uniquely in each person. And they are the things we use to create DNA profiles. And those STRs are made out of repetitive bases. So like the letter AAAA or ACA repeated quite a few times. We then used a gel electrophoresis machine to create the DNA profile. And we use something called restriction enzymes to cut up the DNA into the pieces before we form that DNA profile with the gel electrophoresis machine. We then also looked into the uses of DNA profiles, and we looked at uh, paternity, so looking for a father, crime scene, so we're looking for the suspect. Um, and lastly, as I mentioned, we can also use them for genetic disorders, which means we identify people who potentially have certain disorders before they are born even, or if they are already born, we can tell them you have a 60% chance of maybe developing Alzheimer's because you have the genetic markers for it. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed and I will see you all again soon. Bye.